Hello students, today we are going to start with new lesson combustion and flame. Okay. So, in this chapter uh, basically we will read about the uh, types of flames, how the things burn, why things burn, about the fire. Okay. Now, when I say we will study about fire, children we all are well aware about the fire. In fact, you know uh, like it has got religious importance also in India. Uh, you may uh, remember like in olden days lots of havan used to be done even now also and offerings used to be given to the uh, in the fire uh, during the marriages also havan like havan is or the fire is a very important part in religion also like it has got religious importance also. Now uh, if we talk about something related to this even it is considered as the basic element of life you know and if we talk something beyond religion then I should say or I can say that fire is something which is very important in our life. Just imagine if we don't if we cannot lit uh, if we cannot burn anything if we cannot lit anything then how we are going to cook food. So, there will be no difference left in uh, eating because if we cannot lit the fire we will have to eat everything raw and then this was what the olden men or the uh, the men in the like you know our ancestors uh, they used to do it they used to eat raw food. So, this fire it makes a big difference you know it uh, uh, proves that how the how man has developed from primitive uh, stages from primitive from stone age how we have developed ourselves and how we have come to this new era. Okay. So, first of all to begin with we will start the chapter combustion and flames. Okay. When a substance burns, okay, when a substance burns, what does it emits? It emits a lot of heat and energy, okay. See, we burn many substances, okay. We have seen many substances burning, like talk about paper, talk about petrol, talk about uh, diesel, kerosene, gas, LPG, CNG, okay. So, we have seen many substances burning. Okay. But what is common between burning of all these substances and what is common among these substances? So, the common thing is that the substance which burns, okay, they produce heat and light. Okay. Why, why I am looking towards blackbird again and again because I want to tell you the meaning of the combustion. Now, what is the meaning of combustion children? Combustion means to burn. Okay. Whenever a thing is burning that means we can say that this substance is undergoing combustion. Okay. Whenever a substance burns that means it is undergoing combustion and whenever a substance burns it always produces heat and light. Okay. So, always remember this thing that fire is very important part of our life it has got religious importance. Plus, it is the one which has helped us to develop in a sense which we are now. Okay. So, to begin with what is combustion? So, what is combustion? Anything when or when a substance burn it produces light and heat and how the substance can burn? Like what happens? Why a substance burns? So, when a substance is burning that means what is happening children? When a substance is burning that means it is combining with oxygen. We all know we have read this in the third standard I suppose that for burning what is necessary? Oxygen is necessary. Okay. So, when I say that we are talking about combustion that means we are talking about the substance which undergoes what combustion that means a substance is burning due to burning 
heat and light is produced and when I say when a substance is going the under the process of combustion that means it is combining with oxygen ok. So, let us have a look first of all how substance undergoes combustion what actually happens ok. So, let me take the example of magnesium ok magnesium when reacts with oxygen ok. So, what will happen children? Okay, what is formed here? Magnesium oxide is formed. Okay, so again, what is formed here? Oxide is formed. Now, in the same way, if I talk about carbon, when carbon burns, so what happens? Carbon dioxide is formed. Okay. So I will write over here magnesium oxide. Okay, magnesium oxide and carbon dioxide. So, how can we first of all we will talk about combustion again, how can we define combustion? So, what is combustion when a substance when a substance burns in the air it is called as combustion ok, but this is the half definition ok. When a substance burns in the air it is called as combustion but to produce what? It produces what? How can we complete this definition? This definition is incomplete till we write what is produced heat and light ok. Heat and light are produced ok. Heat and light are produced in this process. ok. Let us try to understand what we are discussing now children. I am talking about what is combustion. What is combustion children? Whenever a substance burns. So, we can say that the substance is undergoing combustion. Now, when I am talking about the combustion, whenever a substance burn it produces two things. It produces heat and light ok. It produces heat and light. So, if we talk about burning ok, when a substance is burning means it is combining with what children? It is combining with oxygen. See in 7th standard also we might have you might have done the uh, experiment or you might have seen the magnesium ribbon burning ok. Actually different substances burns in the different way which we are going to discuss in the later part of the chapter. For now children, when I say that some substance is burning that means it has to combine with what? It has to combine with oxygen. So, just have a look magnesium is burning, magnesium ribbon is burning. So, what is the case? Magnesium is actually combining with oxygen to produce oxide ok, to produce oxide. Why children I am saying oxide? Because if we talk about magnesium it is going to produce magnesium oxide. If we talk about sulfur like sulfur is burning, sulfur is combining with oxygen. So, obviously sulfur dioxide will form ok. If nitrogen is burning, so oxide of nitrogen will be formed. Now, when I am saying carbon is burning ok, how carbon is burning? We all know that in wood carbon is present. Ok, when we talk about coal the uh, like most of the part of uh, coal consists of what carbon. So, when I am saying that I am burning a coal or a 
we are talking about the burning of coal so coal if coal is burning again it has to combine with what that means it is combining with oxygen so again when i when carbon is combining with oxygen oxide will be formed so i have written over here carbon dioxide so from this till now what is clear from this children again same thing i will say that whenever a substance burns to produce heat and light we say that it is combustion okay now combustion means what to react with oxygen to combine with oxygen so i have written over here two examples that if you talk about the burning of magnesium ribbon if you talk about the burning of carbon if you talk about burning of any substance okay if it is burning that means it is combining with oxygen and then oxides are formed okay now how can we write that how can we say or how can we write that when a substance is burning it is combining with oxygen how can we say that so i'll just talk about a little experiment which we all uh, have done maybe in third or fourth standard a very basic kind of uh, experiment so if a candle is taken children i'll rather go and do this side if a candle is taken and what it is burned okay now the candle is burning now when the candle is burning you all can see that light is produced okay you try to touch so what will happen you will feel the heat you will understand that it is very hot okay that means when something is burning heat and light is produced this thing is clear okay so heat and light is produced this one is clear now instead of taking candle if you take example of anything if you take the example of coal or anything you will find that heat and light is produced now the second thing which we want to prove is that for burning oxygen is required so children you will see that candle is burning okay now if you cover the candle with some glass jar in this way if you keep a glass jar inverted okay inverted on the burning candle why i am uh, saying about the why i am saying about the glass jar because it will be visible from the glass jar okay it will be visible you can understand like what is happening inside if you again i'll repeat if you take a burning candle and you will see that heat and light is produced from this and now when you cover the candle with a inverted glass what will happen within few seconds you will see that this uh you know flame is flickering okay it's flickering means what it's not able to burn as uh, nicely as it was burning previously when it was not covered by any kind of inverted jar okay but after you covered the flame after you covered the flame what had started the flame has started flickering okay that means now it's not burning in the same way with the same heat and energy with the same glow as it was burning previously now just wait for few seconds or maybe minutes what will happen you will see that this flame extinguishes you will see that now candle is not burning candle is extinguished what is the case why does this happens children because in the beginning oxygen was there okay in the beginning oxygen was there okay when it was burning co2 is being produced okay but co2 is produced but it was getting mixed up with the atmosphere and this flame was getting atmospheric oxygen okay continuously there was flow contact 
of the atmospheric oxygen. So, there was no problem in the burning of this candle flame, but once when it was covered by the uh, this jar inverted glass. So, what happened now oxygen is not there ok now oxygen cannot come inside and due to burning whatever oxygen is present inside with the help of that oxygen this candle will burn and after burning as I say oxide will be produced here also carbon dioxide is produced, but now what is happening children that now the oxygen is not available oxygen is cut off that means CO2 has replaced oxygen please try to understand this that means CO2 has replaced oxygen and now this area is covered by carbon dioxide due to this due to what when the area is covered by carbon dioxide that means there is no oxygen that means there is nothing which can help in burning ok that is the reason this candle extinguishes this flame extinguishes and you will find that the candle does not burn anymore ok. So, this is a little experiment which shows that for burning he uh, for burning what is required oxygen is required and second thing what does it proves that whenever a substance burns it produces heat and light ok. So, to repeat this thing to just have a quick uh, revision of this when a substance burns in the air again it has to be written children burns in the air it is called as combustion heat and light are produced I have written produces produced in this process ok heat and light are produced in this process. Okay, when we have to define it properly, so how we will write as when a substance burns in air and heat and light is produced or when a substance burns in air to produce heat and light the process is known as combustion ok. Now, after combustion we will see like you know you might have seen this uh, experience this thing in your life that there are few things which burns easily ok. Like you take the example of the you know very common one paper you all have seen a burning paper ok. Cotton burns, paper burns ok there are many things which burns ok. But at the same time you might have also experienced there are few substances which do not burn ok which do not burns. So, how can we can we have any kind of division between these kind of substances children which kind of substances that means two categories of the substances one substance which burns ok one substance which burns and the another substance which do not burn. So, that division we are going to talk about now I will write. combustible substances ok combustible substances now what is the meaning of combustible substances so in combustible substances means those substances which undergoes combustion which burns which combines with oxygen are you getting me clear like how can we define combustible substances those substances which burns to produce heat and light or which the substances which what they react with oxygen and heat and light is produced ok. So, there can be one category of the substances which we can say that these substances are combustible substances ok which can be the substances which can which we can say that yeah these substances are combustible. So, like cotton cloth ok even uh, I have told this thing many a times petrol ok diesel kerosene or LPG uh, all these substances they burn ok all these substances they undergo the process of combustion. 
So, all the substances which undergoes the process of combustion are known as combustible substances. But children there are certain substances which do not burn. Okay. Have you ever tried to burn you know uh, glass or uh, plastic or you know even if you try to burn sand okay, or something like that which you might have experienced there is no need for me to tell or to recall. Just think about your own experiences you will definitely find a substance a list of the substance you will, which you might have you know in uh, your um, uh, younger you know, younger days or uh, you might have tried at least once to burn something which does not burn. Okay. So, all those substances which do not burn which do not undergo the process of combustion are known as non combustible substances. Okay. So, first of all we will talk about I will write the definition of combustible substances. So, how can we define combustible substances? So, those substances which undergoes which undergoes combustion very easily to produce to produce what children again what will be produced here heat and light heat and light please understand what I am writing those substances which undergoes combustion very easily okay. to produce what to produce heat and light are called as are combustible substances combustible substances ok. Now, just now we have discussed about the examples of combustible substances. So, for example, cotton, paper, okay, petrol, LPG, CNG, kerosene, diesel ok all these are the example of combustible substances why because all these substances undergoes combustion very easily and whenever they undergo combustion they produce large amount of heat and light ok. Now, we will talk about the next one non combustible substances just opposite to this what we have written here those substances which undergoes combustion. So, those substances which do not undergo the process of combustion okay, are called as non combustible substances for example, sand, glass okay, all the substances undergoes combustion no these substances do not burn and so we cannot put all these into the same category. Okay. Now, this one was I can write over here number 1. Now, we will discuss about the number 2. I will write the definition of number 2 that is non combustible substances. Okay. Now, this one is non combustible substances how can we do this? So, how can we write over here those 
substances which do not undergo the process of combustion are called as non combustible substances okay now again here also we need to write some examples so for example just try to recollect the substances which you try to burn and it doesn't burns okay can you burn water okay so even water okay glass sand so all these are substances which do not burn etc okay so all these substances these substances do not burn they do not undergo the process of combustion and so these are known as non combustible substances okay so now first of all we have studied about what is combustion children whenever a substance burns whenever a substance undergoes the process of combustion heat and light is produced okay what is combustion burning of a substance okay and producing or in production of heat and light is known as what combustion now when i'm saying combustion a substance is undergoing the process of combustion that means it has to react with what it has to react with the process of like it has to react with the oxygen and when it reacts with oxygen then we can say that the substance undergoes the process of combustion after like what happens in combustion what is form oxides are form okay and evolution of heat and light it is not the case that only heat and light is produced sometime even sound also produces is like sound can also be produced which will be seeing in the little part of the chapter after this we divided the substances the substance which can burn and the substance which cannot burn so combustible substances and non combustible substances now we'll talk about something like what is required okay when i'm saying that this substance okay when i'm saying that there are few substances which are burning okay there are few substances which are burning where i have written i have written over here there are certain substances which are burning and there are certain substances which are not burning so what is the case why does it happens that there are few substances which burns and the few doesn't burns okay so before that now we'll talk about like when these substances are burning so what are the things which are important for burning for the process of combustion what are the things what are the conditions rather i should say what are the conditions which is essential for the process of combustion so let's let's have a look upon the conditions which are necessary for the process of the combustion 